Yeah. I'll keep quiet. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, today working back on the 93 Turbo Fox body and just cleaning up a couple little maintenance items. The first time I had it up in the air, so drained all the oil out of it last night. I went over and was just trying to kind of look at all of the goodies that the car came with. Uh, the previous owner had outlined a bunch of parts, obviously, that came with it, but it's always good to see things for yourself in your own eyes. So the first thing was inspecting the undercarriage, which is overall pretty clean. There is a little bit of corrosion here and there, I'm not gonna lie. It is a Canadian car, but in reality for a 93, uh, this thing's in pretty good shape overall. Gone through, wiped a couple things down. You can see how shiny these Dynamax mufflers are. But kind of starting from the back and working our way forward, you know, you got tubular upper and lower control arms here. Got Lakewood drag shocks. I got our aeromotive fuel system that's run towards the front. Got our girdle and I don't know what the gear set is in this car. No idea. Um, again, this was an original four cylinder automatic. So um, it has been updated to an 8.8, .8, but again, who knows what gears are in there got our tubular subframe connector sitting here and they actually uh, have pass-throughs from the hole here that are going into the roll cage inside the car and those are welded from there you can see we have our aluminum drive shaft got the safety loop and energy suspension transmission mount also has uh, the same in motor mounts got a larger oil pan uh, tubular K member, tubular control arms, and actually have some real nice strange coilovers in the front. So uh, pretty nice setup suspension wise. You can see all of our plumbing here for the turbo system. Uh, you know, we've got our waste gates and our blow off valves. We've got our coolant overflow tank sitting up in here. It's a real nice dual electric fan setup as well. So. Again, we drain the oil, so gonna go ahead and uh, go with some 1540, as a lot of people recommended uh, that for turbo applications. Um, other than that, there's a little bit of a leak from the dipstick here, uh, so went ahead and uh, got some material on the threads and got that tightened up, so that should button that up. And other than that, the only other gremlin uh, that uh, or gremlins, I should say, was the exhaust was actually a little off kilter. So got that all straightened out earlier. Uh, it's mostly just due to this V-band clamp here. Somebody probably had it loose and didn't check the exhaust uh, straightness before they tightened everything up. So that's done. And for some reason, uh, the battery light's on. It looks like there's 14 volts when the car is running, but the battery light is on. So just gonna have to investigate the wiring for the alternator. It has been updated to 3G. So uh, get the car back down, put the oil in, and investigate the alternator. And from there, everything else looks good. So uh, do some more road testing with this thing and see what it can do. All right, so another little task here is the mass air wiring harness connector. And this other guy here, you can see they were extremely close to the turbo. Um, even though with the turbo blanket in here, this was getting super, super hot. So I'm actually just gonna take this harness and run it through the inner fender well here. Uh, so that way I can get it out of the way from the heat and keep it safe so we don't melt anything. You can see this plug here, this connector. That one got a little warm, so just gonna make sure uh, for a little bit of time that it takes to get that run through. There's actually a hole down in the bottom back side of the strut tower. Get it in the wheel well, pass it through. Should be good to go. All right, so I got the wires run through in the inner strut tower here. You can see them coming there. Uh, a little rubber grommet uh, put around this hole and the funny thing is um, I didn't put that grommet there it was already there so I think at one point there was already wiring 
coming through here and for some reason it got pulled back at some point i have no idea um, anyways so cabling's here as you can see and i just need to get that up and tucked out of the way i'll uh, get some zip ties tie wrap everything up and then that way everything will be clear of the heat from the turbo and uh this car is pretty much ready to get fired up again. I just need to figure out that battery light. And uh, from there, we'll be uh, tearing up the streets. All right, guys, so we got all the wiring run through the inside of the inner fender here. Got everything zip tied up out of the way. Got those relays tucked up underneath there. And everything should be good to go out of harm's way. There's no inner fenders in this car, wouldn't mind getting some in there if I can get my hands on a set it's a little extra item of tidiness in my opinion so I figured I was just gonna do a little bit of cleanup because I had the trunk open uh, for the box of documentation I just wanted to put the uh, cover to the battery box back on I'm not really a fan of that Morasso battery box it is doing its job but uh, it could be a little bit of a cleaner install not gonna lie threw the car cover in there and then I got around to vacuuming and everything and um, a few little cleanup things I want to do. I want to get the uh, engine management system here tucked up underneath that seat properly because there's no sense in it just being there. And um, also with the wiring for the, uh, the harness, we'll get that back into the kick panel and um, the actual uh, gauge set up here. They had this just sitting up on the dash here. Uh, I think I'm going to try and stick it in the ashtray door area. Uh, if I can get it in there, you know, reasonably clean enough. I don't want to butcher the center console, but you know, you don't need a plug and chug and well, you can't read this um, when it's sitting like that on the dash. And the first thing that it does when you hit the gas pedal is, well, it comes flying off. So uh, just a few little things here. See if we can get that cleaned up, looking a little bit better. And uh, the interior is already looking good since I've been hitting it with the vacuum. So it should clean up to be a pretty nice ride. You can see they ran the uh, main harness for the uh, engine management system through this hole in the carpet. It almost looks like they cut the wrong hole when they were doing the cage because I noticed the same thing on the other side. Um, so that's unfortunate because they totally could have got this under the carpet and uh, run it through on the underside, but that's okay. And uh, of course this cable here will get run up into the center console somehow and get this guy sitting over there and uh, let's see. This is really strange that they have that just sitting there. So, easy enough guys. Most of you I'm sure already know how to get your kick panel off. But we'll get this all uh, tidied up here and pull this off. There we go. like acrobatic sometimes trying to hold the camera and do things at the same time there we go see here this piggybacks on to our a9l system so i'm just going to try and tuck this up in there I think that'll do. It's a little bit better. Better than this. Alright guys, so on Instagram you guys voted out the chrome emblem, so I'm going to go ahead and get these off. Just going to carefully use a little scraper tool, put some tape on so I don't damage the paint. WD-40 is the best goo gone that you can use. So if you guys don't have any goo gone, but you need to get sticky residue off, uh, WD-40 is the way to go. And most importantly, we're going to get these measured up and the new ones positioned in the right place because these guys are actually sitting a little high.
battery died, so just hit some uh, rubbing compound on top of where the emblem was. The surface is nice and clean. Now we're going to go ahead and install our fresh new black 5 emblem. There we go, black 5-0 emblems installed. I had to look way better.